center of the foot. And what's going to happen is that as I start to master the basic movements of the center, it's going to start to, you got to look at the knees and the feet as a slave to the hips, rather. So as I start to master this, if I can actually move through the center, you'll see how the knees are actually affected. So as I start to take my hips slightly backwards, notice how my kneecap goes in the opposite direction. So a slight move. And that, my friends, is loading the hips. And it's just very, very subtle. And the, way, the reason I say that's loading the hips is because I've created an angle. As I slightly take my hips back, you'll notice that my foot is flat, so that allows greater surface area with the ground, uh, greater potential for ground force energy. The second thing you're going to notice is that I have a vertical shin. The third part about that is, as I start to rotate the hips, the knee goes out. Now this femur starts to move this way. So to keep things very simple, this is straight, this is moving in, so as I start to slightly load the hips and I start to sit into that, that's what's gonna drive my hips in the opposite direction. But here's a mistake that you're gonna often see, is that guys do not realize that movement starts in the middle of your body. So if we're starting to work on the corkscrew, the first thing guys are gonna to wanna to do, they're gonna just take their knee out sideways. That's not how it works. It's because I'm able to slightly counter or externally rotate my hips that turns my knee out. It's not my knee that's turning my hip. So understanding how to corkscrew the hips and externally rotate the hips is the precursor to being able to load the hips and actually do this from the mound while standing and moving down the slope.